Uh, so Vanu is OP and in this video I am going to explain why. On high population and prime they've got a 38% win rate and medium they got a 36% win rate. So clearly there is something going on here. Okay so let's go over some statistics to see if we can figure out in the numbers what's going on here. First let's look at the PPA scythe relative to the air hammer and the banshee for ESFs. So it seems to me that the PPA scythe has a lower usage than the other two and the KD of the scythe is lower. Right, so if it isn't the ESFs, maybe it's the main battle tanks. Now we can also see quite a big difference between the Mag Rider having a lot less kills and the Vanguard having a significantly lower KD. So I think that could explain the NC side of things a little bit. Now when we look overall, the faction specific Infiltrator, Light Assault and Medic all have very similar numbers. The TR max seems to be a bit lower and the NC max is a bit higher than average. But other than that, there isn't that much in it. For some reason, the NC seems to use the light assaults more than the TR or the Vanu. The main difference, one could argue, is actually the difference between the heavy assault classes. It seems that the Vanu have a 1.05 KD. NC has 1 and the TR has 0.9. Interesting. So let's look into the guns in more detail and try to figure out exactly why that could be and if it's something to do with the guns or the players. Uh, so here you can see the Anchor, the MSWR and the Orion, which are the best heavy assault weapons for each respective faction. Now let's see how these compare statistically. Now when we compare the MSWR to the Orion, we see that they have the same fire rate, the same damage at the start, and the accuracy is slightly better whilst moving on the Orion relative to the MSWR. We also see that the recoil is better on the MSWR overall relative to the Orion, but there's a slight sway to the right with the MSWR relative to the Orion, which doesn't do that and spreads evenly. Now we see on both guns that they've got a maximum damage of 143 before 10 meters and if you could extend that by 5 meters that would be 33% more distance uh, before it starts to drop off and that would be huge and that's actually what we have with the MSWR in the form of soft point ammunition but we don't have that on the Orion and when we take that into consideration the MSWR actually seems to look like a better option than the Orion on paper. The Anchor as good as the MSWR but for different reasons it also does have soft point ammunition. Now as an addendum to this I do also want to mention the Battle Geese which a lot of people complain about. The Battle Geese is interesting because it's the Orion but without the grip. Now call me crazy but that seems like a slight nerf to the gun and the this is offset by the uh, ammo being replaced but then you could just if you were to do that look at the saw or you could look at the butcher on the TR and you could make an argument that they would be similar to the battle geese. So let's for argument's sake based on this argue that it's not the weapons that's driving the statistics between the alert win rate of Vanu and also the heavy assault differences. So let's look at what the other reasons could potentially be. I think the true answer to the title of this, which is why Vanu is OP, and they are, is looking at the statistics of different servers. You can see that Miller relative to Cobalt, even though they're in the same region, both EU. Now say what you want about Miller, but the NC seem to be doing pretty well other than at Prime or Last. BHO seems to have a very active community. They've also got one RPC and LPS, which are great outfits. I do wonder if that's a contributing factor towards NC's success. And so this begs the question, if it isn't that the faction's overpowered, perhaps it's the players within that faction, which is actually having more of a driving impact than how OP the faction is. With this being said, on a lot of games, for example, New World and World of Warcraft, if one faction becomes a clear winner and gains dominance on that server, in general, a lot of people will switch to that side or leave the other side. And that's probably part of the reason why we don't have character transfers. The devs are probably concerned that this could happen here too. Okay, so I want to loop back to something earlier in the video that I failed to address, which is the infantry participation between Vanu seems to be higher relative to NC and TR. You can kind of see that Vanu looks even, 
relative to NC and TR when you just look at the statistics as a whole for infantry. But then when you consider that Vanu, generally speaking, has lower pop, 10 to 20% lower, it becomes obvious that there's a clear preference on Vanu towards infantry. And this is further exacerbated when you look at the vehicle statistics of Vanu relative to the other two, with the Scythe having a lot less kills and the Mag Rider having a lot less kills. The other thing I wanted to mention is camel colours. Some people say that the Vanu are more dark and therefore they're harder to see. On that, what I will say is that, for example, Infiltrator, where that would be the most prominent, it doesn't seem that there seems to be much of a KD difference between Infiltrator, between the factions, and the same can be said for Light Assault. So I think that it's more to do with the players than the Camel. The other reason that Vanu could potentially be overpowered is that there is less players on Vanu, and therefore the veterans might tend to go to that faction more just as a way to try to always never have a faction queue and also because then there's less allies trying to fight for the kills that they also want to get. I would also argue that there's some credence to the idea that NC and TR have a different player base than Vanu because Vanu has a sci-fi, nardi, spandex aesthetics which certainly has a different target demographic than NC and TR has and perhaps that really actually could have an impact and I have nothing to back that up but I think that makes sense logically and at least within our outfit I know that a lot of people watch sci-fi I've watched all of Star Trek and a lot of other shows I think that's pretty common for people on Vanu to like sci-fi but again I think that really is dwarfed by the player impacts people have when they create an outfit they develop a community they train their players uh, they play objectives and that player emergent behavior is different par sava as different par outfit and I think that that actually has quite a big impact. The last and most funny reason is that the devs play Vanu so therefore Vanu is going to be treated better and I think that if you play the faction you may be more predisposed to seeing problems with that faction's weapons which I guess could impact balance but I don't think that bears out when you look at the way that the game has been balanced in the last year or two, to be honest. Obviously as well, one we haven't talked about is psychology. And psychology obviously is very important and a big factor. And so the group consensus being that Vanu is OP perhaps perpetuates that to a degree because, you know, then the other faction focuses Vanu less and they want to go to less Vanu bases. So Vanu wins more lots just because of the mindset that Vanu is stronger, even though that may not be as much of the case as people as people purport it to be. Okay, and for those of you that got this far in the video, I do want to quickly update you on what's going to be happening in the future. So for now, I'm catering videos towards veterans and intermediate video players because I think that's where I can offer the most value. But when the new players start coming to the game with the new continent, at that point, I'll probably start releasing like a video a day and I'll have an entire video series dedicated to everything a new player would possibly ever want to know. And it's going to be a very uncontroversial series. Uh, but for now, enjoy the content. GG boys, have a great day.